Right, so hey guys, and welcome back to another Python tutorial. In this video, we're going to be making a really simple budget tracker application using Python. So in the previous series, we basically learned a bit about pandas and how we'd use it for data manipulation. So hopefully I'd be able to use that to cover a few basic concepts and um, do like a recap. So first things first, what we're going to do is import Tekinta because we're going to make this a GUI or GUI. Um, and Tekinta is a library that you use to basically create graphics like buttons, text entries, etc. I've got many tutorials and projects with Tekinta, so I'll make sure to link that around this timestamp as well as in the description below. Now, first things first, we import TK as the entire library. And then from Tekinta, we also import the message box. So message box will basically be using later. And what it is, is basically a um, prompt that basically shows up with a message to the user. We're also going to be importing pandas because that's what we're going to be using for all of our data storage and manipulation. So first things first, what we're going to do, run this cell. Um, I don't think you'd need to install these two libraries. You just probably need to do install pandas, which you can do by typing in pip install pandas into your command prompts. Now, first thing we want to do here is um, we need to remember that all of our data is going to be stored as a uh, CSV file and it's going to be read in using pandas and manipulated using pandas. So we're going to be working with data frames. Now, um, if you're not familiar with pandas, I'll also link tutorials to pandas series in the description and around here. So make sure to check those out as well. So first things first, um, when our application first starts off, it's not going to have a CSV file because we're not going to have any data stored in uh, stored for my users because they haven't really used the application yet. So what we want to do first is do a try statement, which will try and basically load in a CSV called uh, records.csv. Now I already have a version of this stored, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is delete this. Um, and what try will basically do is it's going to try and look for a file called records.csv in our directory. And we're going to put an accept statement here because basically if it doesn't manage to find a file, that would mean that the file doesn't exist. And this is the first ever time the application is being used or the user hasn't made any entries yet. So what we want to do if the data frame doesn't exist is create a template data frame. So no data, just create the columns. So we create a new variable called data, uh, assign it to a dictionary, and then we put the date in, and then I'm going to put it as an empty array, no data yet. We put the description in, empty array, no data yet. Amount, once again, empty array, and then type. So this is all the data that's going to be stored within our budget tracker application for each of our rows. Now, this is just a dictionary, so we have to actually convert that into a data frame by doing pd.dataframe, and then we pass the data variable to that. Um, once that's done, actually, we can start with creating our classes uh, or class for our budget tracker application to sort of maintain good practice and to make this whole tutorial kind of um, worth your guys time. What I'm going to try and do during this tutorial is make the use of object oriented programming. So if you're not familiar with that, I'll also link a few tutorials for that in the description as well as about now. So first things first, uh, we're going to create a class and this is just going to be a blueprint of our object. So this is going to be called budget tracker app. Now in your class, uh, you can have a bunch of functions and usually in your class, you would have a initialize function, which is basically what runs as soon as the object is instantiated or the object is, is created. So you always pass self and then any other parameters that the rest of your application is going to be using. So our application is going to need to know the uh, roots, which is basically going to be the initialized uh, Tekinta library. So we'll be passing that to our object later on. So um, what we want to do first off is do self.roots equals roots. What this will basically do is um, within the object that you have, it will create a new property called root, and then it will assign that to whatever we pass uh, later on. Then uh, what we're going to do is give our root a title. So self.root.title, and that's going to be set to budget checker. You can set this to whatever you like, but I'm going to go with this. So what this will do is when we have a new pop-up window, it's basically going to give that pop-up window a title. Um, so far, so good. Uh, what we can do now is basically test out what we've got so far. 
And to do that, all you would need to do is um, let's run this, create a new cell, and we basically initialize root, which is going to be tk.tk. .tk. This basically creates an instance of the tick into library object. And um, now what we do is create a variable for our application as well. We call our class budget tracker app, and we said we would pass it the root, right? So we're going to pass it the root application. And then one important thing to do whenever you create tick into applications is to make sure that you do root dot or whatever you call this variable dot main loop because otherwise your application will start but it will exit so quickly that you won't even be able to see it. So we run this and I should have a pop up and let me show you what it's done so far. It's basically created a window and it's given it the title budget tracker. That's all we've done so far. So let's do a bit more than just giving it a title, right? Let's actually create a few labels and entries so that our user can see what the application is all about and make a few entries and save those data, as data points. So let's just put this labels and entries for input. This is where the user is going to be entering all of the data. So we said we're going to be storing the date, right? So let's create a label, self.label date is equal to, so this is once again a, um, attributes that's going to be stored in our object later on it's like giving the object an internal variable and we're going to assign that to um, tk dot label and that's basically an internal um, sort of function within the tk library which lets you create a label on the screen so we're going to pass it roots because that's always going to be needed because it needs to know where it's going to be placed and then we're going to pass the text that we're going to need let's just say date and we can also provide the format, let's say year, year, month, month, day, day, right? You can change it to whatever you like, actually, it's up to you. So if we now run this, what you'll notice is that nothing's actually on the screen. Because with Tikinta, what happens is once you've created a like a, an element, like a label, for example, you actually need to tell Tikinta where to place it on the screen. So in the next line, that's what we're going to do. We're going to use a grid. So we're going to say self.label date dot grid and when you do grid you basically need to tell it what row you want to place this label on or this element on and what column so i'm going to do row equals zero so the very first row and column equals zero very first column run this and what we will get uh this is really small let me drag it across if i can what we'll get is uh like a label like this label is just a bit of text that will show the user what to put in the entry now, next, what we're going to do is actually create an entry so that the user can type in the information for the date. So just like we did before, we're going to create a new attribute and that's going to be called entry date. And that's going to be equals to tk.entry. Once again, a tick into function. Pass it the root as usual. Uh, and we don't really need to pass it anything else at this stage. What we need to do next is like we did with the label, we need to place it on the screen. So we're going to do self.entryDate.grid. And then we're basically going to say same row, but we're going to move to column one. Now, if I run this, what this does is it's basically on the same row as the label, but column one basically puts it right next to it because it's the column next to the, the first one. So that's a pretty neat looking application so far, but we can we can do better as we go along. So we've got the date label, we've got the date entry. Let's make a, a, a label and entry for description amount and type as well. So next, what we can do is simply just copy um, some of this to save some time. And then we'll just update the variables. So the next thing on the list was label description. And then we'll change this to let's change this to description uh, and then just update this really so uh, the position is going to obviously have to be updated so instead of being row zero we don't want it to overlap with the first label so we're going to do row one and column still going to be zero because we want it to be aligned to the left then the entry is going to follow the same pattern row one because we want it to be on the second line and the column is going to be one because we want it to be on the right run that and as you can see basically done the same thing for description and um yeah it's just done row one instead of row zero because we want it to be on the second line right now we'll do the same thing again basically overall everything remains kind of the same we just need to update the variable names and a few other things so this one's going to be amount 
So we'll change the description to amount. Uh, and then we'll change this to as well. Copy this over a few times. And then the row will obviously change to two this time. And column zero will be on the left for the label. And column one will be on the right for the entry. Double check this. And boom, everything's looking good so far. And which I believe we just got one more ent label and entry to go. And then we can progress to the more interesting kind of stuff. So the last one was type. So the uh, type of transaction, whether it's an income or expense. Type. And then we'll just type and we'll put in here, which will say income expense. So the user knows what to type. So this is basically going to tell our application whether this is an income or expense, so whether it's coming in or being taken out. So we'll update this stuff and change the row to three. And we should have everything that we need in terms of labels and entries at this point. So that's basically it for the um, entries and labels. That's all the data we're going to be collecting in our application. Now the next thing we want to do is actually add in the buttons that are going to you know, take this data and then store it in our application. We're going to have two main functions of this application. One is going to be add entry. So what that's going to do is every time you click on the add entry button, it's going to take all this data, save it as a new row in our um, CSV file. Uh, and there's going to be another button called view entries. And that's basically going to show all of the rows from our CSV files. So pretty basic application, no, nothing complicated so far. So what we're going to do here, let's make a new comment called buttons. And then what we're going to do in there is actually start creating the buttons that we need for our application. So we'll do self, self dot button app equals dk dot button. Once again, it's a, um, it's a function within the TK library. We pass it the root as per usual. We need a text so that the user knows what the button is all about. So we'll create that and call it add entry. And then <clears throat> since a button sort of a dynamic thing, it needs to do an action when you click it, right? So you need to give it a command. And the command is basically going to be uh, a reference to a function that we're later going to create within the code. So I'll do self dot add <coughs> entry as the function. Now, bear in mind, obviously, this function doesn't exist as of yet. We're going to be creating that in a few moments. Now, if I run this now, we'll basically, <coughs> as no entry, no attribute to add entry. OK, it seems like it's not going to run without the function actually being there. So what I'm going to do for the time being is actually create the function uh, def add entry. Oh do self there and we'll just do pass because that's going to do nothing so what this will give you is basically you won't see the button because we need to we need to uh, tell Tekinda where to place it once again so we'll do the same thing as before uh, self dot button add uh, dot grid and then we basically specify the row and the column the last row we used was three so we'll go to four we'll do column zero but <clears throat> what I'm going to do here is use something called column span. And what column span basically does is it says, okay, I'm going to use column zero, but I'm going to utilize two spaces instead of just one column. So if you use four there, it would basically use four column spaces instead of, you know, one. And that basic, what that basically does is it gives it like a sort of center look, which looks a lot better than the usual. Now, if I change this from pass to print, um, this is the... Add entry function and run the whole thing again what you'll notice every time i click this is that we have you know a print statement that says this is the add entry function and that's basically the whole point of the command so command is just supposed to be a reference to a function so that every time the button is clicked that function can be run now we'll add the functionality to this in a moment um right after we're done with creating our second button which will basically be about viewing the entries instead of adding the entries so same thing again, self dot button view instead of button add, we create a button root text equals the entries command equals self dot view entries. Now we'll create that function in a second. So please bear with me there. 
We use the grid option again. This time row five, column zero still, and we'll use column span equals two to give it that nice center effect. Now we need to make sure we create the function here, otherwise tick enter will cry. Uh, print the view and function. Let's run this. And we have a new button for view entries. We click view entries and we see this is the view entry function. Click add entry and this we see this is the add entry function. Thanks for watching this video so far. I'd like to quickly shout out GoLogin, which is a company that lets you stay anonymous while browsing different accounts online and manage your private accounts. So many of you guys are active online, developing businesses on the internet, promoting yourself on social networks, etc. And with a large number of accounts comes obviously the inconvenience and risks that you may get confused by dozens of accounts like Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, etc. At the same time, you're obviously constantly risking important data that you store in your browser in case you get banned on certain applications and you lose everything. There is a all-in-one solution to this actually, which is called Go Login. It's a secure platform for managing all your online accounts, which will have a lot of ton of security features like a unique digital footprint for each of your accounts, secure cloud storage under key and lock, digital footprint control through customization of settings, centralized access allocation for the team, etc. Now, if you guys would like to support the video because this video is affiliated, uh, I would highly recommend you guys to click the link in the description and try out for yourself the free trial of GoLogin or purchase it if it supports your needs. Thank you. Now that we have like a perfectly, uh, perfectly good looking UI, well, for beginners at least, and per perfectly functioning as well, what we need to do is add a bit of life to the application or add the logic behind the application inside these functions. So what do we really need to happen every time we click on the add entry function, you might say. So first thing we need to, that we need to happen is all of the entries that we've created here, right? So entry date, entry description. Um, oh, I just noticed I've done a typo here. So this should be entry. That would have been a fatal issue if we didn't fix it beforehand so all of this stuff that points to entries is supposed to be called entry and not label so let's just fix that quickly so what i was saying is all of the entries that we have entry date entry description entry amount entry type what we need to do is retrieve the value that the user enters in there so what i mean by that is let's say i typed in i don't know 12 0, 4, 0, 3, right and click add entry i need to basically grab that value and then save that value to the csv somehow and then clear the entry so those are the three things that need to happen every time i click the add entry so we're going to try and do the first steps first so retrieving data from the add uh, from the entries right so how do we do that we already have access to the entry amount entry description entry date and entry type um variables or entities because we've assigned them to self and self is passed in here so what you need to do is simply um something like this create new variable called dates and then we assign that to self so entry date and then we basically use the get function in tickinter so what that will do is basically get all the text from that entry now we do the same thing for description, self dot entry description dot get, same thing for amount, self entry amount dot get, and then lastly same thing for entry type. Um let's just call we can't call it type, I guess, because that's a um internal keyword in Python. So self dot entry type dot get. Now to make sure that it's actually valid, what we'll do here is just print out all of the values at the end. Let's run this code. And okay, I'll just put numbers for it. One, two, three, four. Add entry. Boom. We can see that it's uh, all valid data. So it's stored date as the right thing. Description is the right thing. Amount is the right thing. And entry is the right thing. So we managed to successfully retrieve these values. Now, in a good application, what you would have is validation. 
um, which is making sure that the user has entered all of the values before trying to save that data so that we have the most complete set of data. So we'll try and do that in our application as well. So using this line, um, you can do if date and description and amount and entry type uh, prints all data is valid. Else print missing data. So what this will basically do is it will make sure that none of these um oops none of the data that we get from these entries is empty we'll need to have some kind of value in there so if i do ad and add entry it will say missing data because it's missing three fields right do it again try again missing data still do it again and it says all data is valid because it's found that everything has um, some kind of data in it so we're basically going to use that validation to make sure that our application knows when to store data and when to let the user know that they need to fill in all data. And instead of prints, what we're going to use here is a message box instead. Um, so if you remember, I told you guys we're going to be using message box to show users messages. So we'll do message box dot show error, which is because there is an error at the moment. We'll title the window as error, and then we'll basically um, Say the error so all fields are required you can change it to whatever you like to be honest and over here we will basically just leave that as that for now let's look at this and over here add entry all fields are required see that's a lot better than a print statement because it's a nice GUI showing up you can click ok try again obviously it doesn't work put in everything and you don't get the error anymore you just get a print statement perfect so far so good so what we need to do next is actually try and get into the real meat and uh, nuts of this code so what we need to do is um, try and create a data frame out of the values that we're getting so we've got all the values ready we've got the date description amount and entry type we're making we're also making sure that they are valid which means that all the data is present so in the if statement what we will do next is uh, we will create a new variable called new entry and that's going to be assigned to a new data frame and this is just going to be all the you need to bear in mind that this needs to be the same as this so essentially you can just copy this dictionary up here and paste it down here like this uh, I'm just going to indent that so that it's on the same line now, instead of having empty arrays here, we'll actually put the valid rows of row of data here. So instead of having just empty array, we'll put the date in there because the date is stored in here. Then we'll put the description in there because the description is stored in there. Put the amount in there because the amount is stored in there. And then we'll put the entry type in there. See, entry, entry type is stored in there. So this right here, will just create a new data frame um, with the data and that's just going to have one row of data and it's going to store it in the variable called new entry now what we need to somehow do is then later append that data to our df because our df is either going to have all the data that was previously stored or um, like a blank data set that we need to append to so we need to append to that now um, to append to something in pandas what we'll need to do is basically um, First of all, have access to this DF, um, this DF variable because it's outside. We're going to have to use global to have access to it. So we're just going to do global DF, and then once we're done with that, we'll do DF equals td dot concat, which is this is basically like doing an append in an array. So when you add a new item to a list, you're just adding a new entry to your data frame. So um, what we'll do is take the existing data frame, which is DF, the old one and then we'll add the new entry to this uh, data frame. So it's basically what it's going to do is combine the two data frames together and then overwrite it to this uh, new variable called df right here. So it's probably a bit confusing. You can change this to a new variable if you like, but um, it'll basically do the same thing. And then we're going to use ignore index and set that to true. What that will basically do is um, make sure that we're not having an index column separately for each of the data frames because we don't really need that. Now, finally, that we have all of our data stored in this new data frame, um, we're going to do df.2csv 
and we're going to store that data. And you need to make sure that this is stored in the same file name that you're reading in at the start. So that will basically be records.csv for me. And then set index to false because we do not want the index column to be stored. It's really useless for our use case. Then once we're done with that, we can just show a friendly message, message box dot show info instead of error because this is not an error. And then we'll just do success. Um, the entry save oh, save success fully perfect so let's run this up and then i'll just put a few things here 12 0 3 0 2 gym let's say 12.99 and then this can this is obviously an expense so add entry it says entry saved successfully now do we trust this is the question let's close this and i'll go in my file explorer and indeed there is a file here called records if i open this okay and after taking a bit of time to load we can see that it's actually stored all the data that we inputted into our um into our application so that's all, all well and good now we need to also confirm that it's able to you know add additional information to this file because we had the code uh, so that it doesn't overwrite the file each time. So basically, this time when the code runs, instead of creating a new data frame at the start, it should read in the existing data frame so we don't overwrite the existing one with only new data we want to append to it, right? So we run it this time again, do it again. Uh, we'll just do test, test, 12, print, add entry, okay, close try and open this again and if it did work it will have yep as you can see it did work because it has the new record if it didn't work then it would have cleared that it would have cleared the first row and then just had test in there which is what we don't want in this case now now that the file system is perfectly working i mean our database so i guess the back end is working completely fine we're able to add entries and append to the data frame what we need to work on is the view entries function, which should be fairly simple in this case. So we're going to be needing access to the data frame again, because this data frame right here is going to be the read in variable, uh, read in data. And then anything that gets appended to it is also going to be stored in DF. So we're going to need access to that. So we're going to do global DF to have access and then in Tikin, so if you wanted to have a separate window apart from your first application that you have, you need to do uh, tk dot top level, and then pass in the root to uh, to this function because it needs to know what the initial application is. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to create a new window, and we're going to call it top for now. You can just call it whatever you want, um, and that's going to be a new pop up to our initial window. And then we're going to give it a title just like we did our first time i'm going to call it view entries then what we're going to do here is actually let's run the code just to show the gist of what's going on so if i click on view entries uh, i have a new pop-up window like i said it's called view entries so in that view entries what i'm intending to do is basically show all of the data that we have inputted so that they can see all of the entries that are saved in the budget tracker so what we can do next is create something called a text element so what that is is a multi-line sort of comment box that you can put text in or multi-line entry in the existing entry that we have it's just one line this one is like a multi-line one and what we'll do with that is do text.pack we won't use grid for this because what pack will do is basically spread it across the screen and um, place it in the center of the screen so once we've got that it's basically simple we all we need to do is actually loop over the data frame that we have so to do that we can use um something like for row in df dot it rows uh, and you can also create an index variable if you wanted to have like a iterator which goes from you know zero to all the way to the however many times it iterates through the data frame you can have that as well um let's do that and what iterose is going to do i think i spelled that wrong actually it 
E R R O W S. It's gonna iterate through all of the rows of the data frame, which is what we need. Now for each of the row that it's iterating through, we need to insert a new uh, in into the existing text element which we created, the multi-line thing. We need to insert a new record and we're gonna be saying tk.end because what we want to do is basically insert it from start to the end and then this is going to be the data that we input so we'll create an f string uh actually let's not do an f string just to keep things a bit simple we'll do date and that's going to be assigned to the row and then the date uh we'll do a plus here then we'll do a description that's going to be assigned to row description now obviously row is each row within the data frame and then this is just the column we're accessing because in each row we're going to have multiple columns then we have the amount the, the row and then the amount if you code your column something different in your data frame you will have to adjust this code according to that by the way guys um Mounts. I think I've done the wrong thing here. She just needs to be plus, not no commas and stuff. Apologies for that. So it's just basically a big string that we're concatenating to each other. And then lastly, we'll have the type, uh, which will be set to plus the row type. Cool. I think we're just missing a few columns here for decoration sake, and then we should be almost good to go. Uh, cool. So that should basically go through all of the rows in the data frame, and for each row, it would add a um, new entry or a new record within the multiple line entry that we've created up here. So let's run this. If we click view entries. It's basically showing an empty one. I think the reason is because cannot concatenate float which okay. So basically what what the issue is that we have the amount column is obviously a float or a or a number. So we, we can't add that to the string. So we'll just cast it to a string for time being using the str operator. And that should basically sort that out. Uh view entries. Okay. I mean, that's almost perfect. We just need to add a gap between each of the things. So we can see all of the data here. It's just missing the gap. And like I said, this is just a multiple line entry. You can type whatever you want in here. Then when you close and view entries again, it'll go back to whatever it was before. So no issues there at all. Um, let's just add a bit of a space between everything. So what I'm going to do for the start of each next one, I'm just going to do something like that. Just so that we have a bit of separation between everything. Do that again. Uh, view entries. And boom. I think that looks pretty good to me. Um, we can double check this now. We can actually make another entry here. So we can say, I don't know. Um, let's put the 2407, 30 description. Um, let's just say groceries is that a 50 for now and um let's add the entry entry added view entries and when we view entries uh let's just have a look gym on expense date okay it's basically added it in but the only thing that's missing is a new line so we want each record to be obviously separated by a new line that's quite easy to do actually at the end of all of this we just insert a new line and i believe that should fix things for us yep it did so as you can see right here the application showing the the date uh the description the amount as well as the uh, the type you can obviously add pound sign and stuff to the string as you want or dollar signs as you wanted to but that's uh, pretty much the implementation of it now the only thing you could do to actually improve this a bit more is if you notice that put this test um, three every time I do add entry it adds it um, 
you can see the updated view here it's added it but the existing data like the entries don't get cleared up which is a bit annoying so if i wanted to add another record i'd have to clear them myself so let's just uh, add a bit of code that will clear the entry boxes once it's done saving the data shouldn't be too hard um so let's just get that bit done and sorted so once the data is saved and we've shown the message of success what we do is basically yourself for entry date or whatever entry you're trying to uh, clear and then you use delete and then we do 0 .tk, um, and 0 comma tk end what this is basically saying is you want to take this entry use the delete function on it and you want to clear it from the zero position so the first character of whatever's in there to all the way to the last character and you want to basically do this with all the entries so we had entry date we had entry description we had entry amounts and then entry five entry five cool so let's run this again uh let's put a date in zero two zero 240201 I don't know mangoes or oh, let's say apples uh 12.32 add entry entry success added successfully and as you saw as soon as you pressed OK your fields are cleared so it's pretty nice it basically just clears it for you and um yeah it's basically added it in as well now there's a lot of other stuff we can do so if you guys would like to see uh, an extension tutorial on this please let me know i'll most likely end up making this a series uh but i'm not too sure about that as of now um hopefully you guys have enjoyed and have learned something new today and if you guys have any feedback or ideas leave them in the comments as per usual and i'll see your beautiful faces in the next tutorial peace